Dr. Wilson, I'm uh, practicing in Omaha, Nebraska. Um, I'm just going to ask uh, a couple of questions about the use of, say, flexion extension and cervical spine x-rays on your decision making, um, in particular when we're going to talk about long segment fusions or going from the front or, or combined. Um, I'm a big proponent of the modified K-line. I did my fellowship with Mike Failings. He would kind of drum it into me all, all the time, make sure we, when we're deciding anterior, posterior, modified K-line is, is really, really important. But I think the flexion extension and x-rays give you a little added dimension. Um, and then for me, uh, the, the kind of biomechanics of a C2 to T1 fusion with C7 T1 pedicle screws compared to a C3 to C7 fusion. Um, can't really compare that to a C3 to C7 laminoplasty. Um, and kind of when you're talking about OPLL across one or two segments compared to OPLL across kind of C1 to, 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 to T1. Um, I don't know whether kind of we're comparing apples with, with, with oranges. I know a lot of the comments have been, well, you know, with a longer kind of continuous segment, I'd much rather go for the, 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 the fusion um, and say, somewhere in my hands, I do very little laminoplasty, mostly always do fusion kind of from C2 to, to, to T1. Um, I was just wondering if I can get the, the panel's thoughts about the kind of the biodynamics, about the differences in the length of the fusion from the back, um, as well as use of flexion extension x-rays. Um, I always use flexion extension. I agree with you 100%. I, I get a lot of information from the flexion extension x-rays and sometimes I'll see patients that come and for a second opinion and they've had like anterior posterior obliques so they haven't had flexion extension and I'm always getting those because I think you get a lot of information. We've actually a lot of done, uh, done a lot of research with dynamic MRIs and I think you get even more information from that as you can sort of see with some of the slides I showed. Um, the other thing, uh, you know, I think it's very important to look at sort of the flexion extensions and, and the things that I always look for, I, I mean, I usually go to T1. Um, the things that worry me the most are the people, the old ladies with osteoporosis, and they're pretty um, degenerative from like C5 to 7, and then you're fusing from C3 down to T1, and you've got sort of C5 to T1 really solid, and you've got these little lateral masses at C3 and C4 that are just at risk for pulling out. If there's any positive regional balance, you're, they're gonna pull out. And so I agree with a lot of people going up to C2 just to get that uh, extra fixation. Because I've seen a lot of them fail when you stop at C3. I, I would add that, you know, so we've done a lot of look at, you know, what, how do we differentiate those people that need to cross the junction and how far and, yeah, and there, there too, the T1 slope is, I think, very important as is their native balance. A close look at F and E is important close look at how stiff or unstiff the spine is. I think a CT scan is very helpful in severe spondylosis and OPLL cases on top of the MRI or CT Milo in lieu of both. And then uh, just a comparison of the uh, supine versus upright studies in terms of their alignment, whether you get a separate x-ray or not. Especially in those little old ladies, it's amazing how many will be fairly kyphotic down at T23 and T34. And there are arguments to be made for those people who have an SVA, you know, in the seven plus centimeter range of taking them actually further down, down to T3 or T4. And being able to show that is very difficult in terms of numbers of patients required. And we heard in the session this morning that maybe those differences in SVA don't have a huge impact on outcomes. I, I think there's a lot yet to be said, but if you want a decent alignment postoperatively, I think there's a million things in dynamic radiography, both supine versus upright and flexion extension are critical.